The production of new organisms from the existing organisms of the same species is known as reproduction. Reproduction is essential for the survival of a species on this earth. So, living organisms produce more organisms of their kind to maintain the life of their species on this earth. Types of reproduction There are two main methods of reproduction in living organisms, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction In the asexual reproduction method, certain body cells of the parent organism undergo repeated mitotic cell divisions to form two, or more, new organisms of the same kind. Asexual reproduction takes place by six different methods. These are, fission fragmentation regeneration budding vegetative propagation spore formation. Fission in the process of fission, a unicellular organism splits, or divides, to form two, or more, new organisms. Fission is of two types, binary fission and multiple fission, depending on whether the parent organism splits to form two new organisms or more than two organisms. Binary fission Binary fission is an asexual method of reproduction of organisms. In binary fission, the parent organism splits, or divides, to form two new organisms. When this happens, the parent organism ceases to exist and two new organisms come into existence. The unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium, leishmania, bacteria, etc., reproduce by binary fission. Amoeba reproduces by binary fission by dividing its body into two parts. This happens as follows, when the amoeba cell has reached its maximum size of growth, then first the nucleus of amoeba lengthens and divides into two parts. After that the cytoplasm of amoeba divides into two parts, one part around each nucleus. In this way, one parent amoeba divides to form two smaller amoebae. Lishmania is a unicellular animal. Lishmania has a greater degree of organization in its body, having a whip-like structure called flagellum at its one end. Lishmania reproduces by the process of binary fission. In Lishmania, the splitting of parent cell during fission, or cell division, takes place in a definite plane, longitudinally, with respect to flagellum at its end. In this respect Lishmania differs from amoeba. Multiple fission Multiple fission is also an asexual method of reproduction in organisms. In multiple fission, the parent organism splits, or divides, to form many new organisms at the same time. Sometimes, a cyst or protective wall is formed around the cell of a single-celled organism. Inside the cyst, the nucleus of cell splits, or divides, several times to form many smaller nuclei called daughter nuclei. Little bits of cytoplasm collect around each daughter nuclei and thin membranes are formed around them. In this way, many new daughter cells are formed from a single parent cell within the cyst. In fact, as many daughter cells are formed as the number of daughter nuclei produced by the divisions of the parent nucleus. When the favorable conditions arrive, the cyst breaks open and the many daughter cells present in it are released, each forming a new organism. In this way, a single cell parent undergoes multiple fission to reproduce many daughter cells at the same time. Plasmodium is a protozoan, a microscopic, single-celled animal, which reproduces by the asexual method of multiple fission. About 1,000 daughter cells are produced by the multiple fission of one plasmodium cell. Plasmodium is the malarial parasite which produces malaria disease in human beings. Fragmentation The breaking up of the body of a simple multicellular organism into two, or more, pieces on maturing, each of which subsequently grows to form a complete new organism, is called fragmentation. 
Some of the multicellular organisms having relatively simple body organization can break up easily into smaller pieces or fragments on maturing. These pieces or fragments can then grow and form new organisms complete in all respects. Fragmentation is an asexual method of reproduction. The reproduction by fragmentation method can occur in simple multicellular plants as well as animals. The organisms like spirogyra and sea anemones can reproduce by the method of fragmentation. The main difference between fission and fragmentation is that in fission, a unicellular organism breaks up to form two, or more, daughter organisms, whereas in fragmentation, a multicellular organism breaks up to form two, or more, daughter organisms. Regeneration the process of getting back a full organism from its body parts is called regeneration. The simple animals like hydra and planaria show regeneration. This means that in these organisms, whole new organisms can be reproduced from their cut body parts. Planaria is a flatworm which is found in freshwater ponds and slow-moving streams. Planaria possesses great power of regeneration. If the body of planaria somehow gets cut into a number of pieces, then each body piece can regenerate into a complete planaria by growing all the missing parts. Regeneration can be used to reproduce only those organisms which have relatively simple body organization consisting of only a few specialized cells or tissues. In complex multicellular organisms, specialized cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, Organs make up organ systems, and finally organ systems make up organisms. Since complex multicellular organisms have a very high degree of organization in their body, they cannot be reproduced from their cut body parts by the process of regeneration. Budding In budding, a small part of the body of the parent organism grows out as a bud which then detaches and becomes a new organism. The asexual reproduction by budding is observed in hydra and yeast. In hydra, first a small outgrowth called bud is formed on the side of its body by the repeated mitotic divisions of its cells. This bud then grows gradually to form a small hydra by developing a mouth and tentacles. And finally the tiny new hydra detaches itself from the body of parent hydra and lives as a separate organism. I. In this way, the parent hydra has produced, or created, a new hydra. Thus, hydra reproduces asexually by growing buds from its body. This is called budding. Vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation is an asexual method of reproduction. The reproduction by vegetative propagation occurs only in plants. In vegetative propagation, new plants are obtained from the parts of old plants, like stems, roots and leaves, without the help of any reproductive organs. Vegetative propagation usually involves the growth and development of one, or more, buds present on the old part of the plant to form a new plant. These buds are in the dormant state, inactive state, in the old part of the plant. When provided suitable conditions, like moisture, warmth, etc., these buds grow to form new plants. Plants raised by vegetative propagation can bear flowers and fruits earlier than those produced from seeds. Such methods also make possible the propagation of plants such as banana, orange, rose and jasmine that have lost the capacity to produce seeds. Another advantage of vegetative propagation is that all plants produced are genetically similar enough to the parent plant to have all its characteristics. Spore formation Spore formation is the asexual method of reproduction. The reproduction by spore formation takes place in plants. In spore formation, the parent plant produces hundreds of microscopic reproductive units called spores. When the spore case of the plant bursts, then the spores spread into air. 
When these airborne spores land on food under favorable conditions, they germinate and produce new plants. Most of the fungi, bacteria and non-flowering plants such as ferns and mosses reproduce by the method of spore formation. The common bread mold is a fungus plant whose scientific name is Rhizopus. The common bread mold reproduces by the method of spore formation. Most of the fungi, like Rhizopus, Muco, etc., bacteria and non-flowering plants such as ferns and mosses reproduce by the method of spore formation. The common bread mold is a fungus plant whose scientific name is Rhizopus. The common bread mold, or Rhizopus fungus, reproduces by the method of spore formation. Tissue culture. The production of new plants from a small piece of plant tissue, or cells, removed from the growing tips of a plant in a suitable growth medium, called culture solution, is called tissue culture. The process of tissue culture for producing new plants is carried out as follows. A small piece of plant tissue is taken from the growing point of the plant, tip of the plant, and placed on a sterile jelly which contains nutrients and plant hormones. The hormones make the cells in the plant tissue divide rapidly producing many cells which form a shapeless lump of mass called callus. The callus is then transferred to another jelly containing suitable plant hormones which stimulate the callus to develop roots. The callus with developed roots is then put on a yet another jelly containing different hormones which stimulate the development of shoots. The callus having roots and shoots separates into tiny plantlets. In this way, many tiny plantlets are produced from just a few original plant cells or tissue. The plantlets thus produced are transplanted into pots or soil where they can grow to form mature plants. Sexual reproduction Sexual reproduction takes place by the combination of special reproductive cells called sex cells. Sex cells are of two types, male sex cells and female sex cells. The sex cells are commonly known as gametes. Thus, the cells involved in sexual reproduction are called gametes. Gametes are of two types, male gametes and female gametes. In sexual reproduction, a male gamete fuses with a female gamete to form a new cell called zygote. This zygote then grows and develops into a new organism in due course of time. Sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The plants in which the sex organs are carried within the flowers and the seeds are enclosed in a fruit are called angiosperms. Angiosperms are commonly known as flowering plants. The flowering plants reproduce by sexual reproduction method. The main parts of a flower are receptacle, sepals, petals, stamen and carpal. Receptacle T. The base of a flower to which all the parts of a flower are attached is called receptacle. Sepals. The green, leaf-like parts in the outermost circle of a flower are called sepals. All the sepals taken together are called calyx. The function of sepals is to protect the flower in its initial stages when it is in the form of a bud. Petals. The colorful parts of a flower are called petals. The petals lie inside the sepals. All the petals taken together are called corolla. The petals are usually scented. The function of petals is to attract insects and to protect the reproductive organs which are at the center of the flower. Stamen. The little stalks with swollen tops just inside the ring of petals in a flower are called stamens. Stamen is the male reproductive organ of the plant. Stamen produces pollen grains. The stamen is made of two parts, a filament and an anther. Carpal. In the center of a flower, there is a flask-shaped organ called carpal. Carpal is the female reproductive organ of the plant. A carpal is made of three parts, stigma, style and ovary. 
The top part of carpal is called stigma. Stigma is for receiving the pollen grains from the anther of stamen during pollination. Stigma is sticky so that pollen can stick to it. The middle part of carpal is called style. Style is a tube which connects stigma to the ovary. The swollen part at the bottom of a carpal is called ovary. Pollination The transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a stamen to the stigma of a carpal is called pollination. Thus, pollination is said to take place when pollen grains are carried from the anther to the stigma of the fleur. Pollination is done by insects, like bees and butterflies, birds, wind, and water. Pollination can occur in two ways, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination When the pollen grains from the anther of a fleur are transferred to the stigma of the same fleur, or another fleur on the same plant, it is called self-pollination. Cross-pollination when the pollen grains from the anther of a fleur on one plant are transferred to the stigma of a fleur on another similar plant, it is called cross-pollination. When an insect sits on the fleur of a plant for sucking nectar, then the pollen grains from the anther of this fleur stick to its body. And when this insect now sits on another fleur of another similar plant, then the pollen grains sticking to its body are transferred to the stigma of this second fleur. In this way the insect transfers the pollen grains from the anther of fleur in one plant to the stigma of fleur in another plant and causes cross-pollination. Fertilization After a pollen grain falls on the stigma, the next step is fertilization. Fertilization occurs when the male gamete present in pollen grain joins with the female gamete, or egg, present in ovule. This happens as follows. When a pollen grain falls on the stigma of the carpal, it bursts open and grows a pollen tube downwards through the style towards the female gamete in the ovary. A male gamete moves down the pollen tube. The pollen tube enters the ovule in the ovary. The tip of pollen tube bursts open and male gamete comes out of pollen tube. In ovary, the male gamete of pollen combines with the nucleus of female gamete or egg present in ovule to form a fertilized egg, called zygote, and we say that fertilization has taken place. Germination The beginning of the growth of seeds is called germination of seeds. Germination begins when the seed absorbs water, swells and bursts through the seed coat. The water helps the enzymes to function in the seed. The enzymes digest the stored food in cotyledons and make it soluble. This soluble food makes the radical and plumal present in the seed to grow. Reproduction in human beings The humans use sexual mode of reproduction. The organs associated with the process of reproduction in human males, men, and human females, women, are different. So the reproductive systems in males and females are different which are known as male reproductive system and female reproductive system, respectively. The reproductive systems in human beings become functional, or start functioning, at a definite age called puberty. Male reproductive system The human male reproductive system consists of the following organs. Testes, scrotum, epididymis, Vas deferens, or sperm duct, seminal vesicles, prostrate gland and penis. Testes are the oval-shaped organs which lie outside the abdominal cavity of a man. Testes are the primary reproductive organs in man, or males. The function of testes is to make the male sex cells, or male gametes, called sperms and also to make the male sex hormone called testosterone. The sperms formed in testes come out and go into a coil tube called epididymis. The sperms get stored temporarily in epididymis. From epididymis, the sperms are carried by a long tube called vas deferens, or sperm duct, which joins with another tube called urethra coming from the bladder. Along the path of vas deferens, 
the glands called seminal vesicles and prostrate gland add their secretions to sperms so that the sperms are now in a liquid. This liquid plus the sperms it contains is called semen. The secretions of seminal vesicles and prostrate gland provide nutrition to the sperms and also make their further transport easier. Urethra forms a common passage for sperms and urine. Urethra carries the sperms to an organ called penis which opens outside the body. Female Reproductive System The human female reproductive system consists of the following organs, ovaries, oviducts, which are also called fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina. Ovaries are the primary reproductive organs in a woman, or female. The function of ovaries is to make mature female sex cells, or female gametes, called, ova, or, eggs, and also to make the female sex hormones, called estrogen and progesterone. Just above the ovaries are the tubes called oviducts, which are also known as fallopian tubes. The oviducts are not directly connected to ovaries but have funnel-shaped openings which almost cover the ovaries. The ovum, or egg cell, released by an ovary goes into the oviduct through its funnel-shaped opening. The fertilization of egg, or ovum, by a sperm takes place in the oviduct. The two oviducts connect to a bag-like organ called uterus, or womb, at their other ends. The growth and development of a fertilized ovum, or fertilized egg, into a baby takes place in the uterus. The uterus is connected through a narrow opening called cervix to another tube called vagina which opens to the outside of the body. Fertilization In human beings, internal fertilization takes place. The sperms, or male gametes, made in the testes of man are introduced into the vagina of the woman through penis during copulation the sperms move up through cervix into the uterus. From uterus, the sperms pass into the oviducts. One of the oviducts contains an ovum, or egg cell, released by the ovary during ovulation. Only one sperm fuses with the ovum, or egg, in the oviduct to form a zygote. This is called fertilization. Thus, the fertilization of the ovum, or egg, takes place in the oviduct. The embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special tissue called placenta. This is a disc which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains willy on the embryo's side of the tissue. On the mother's side are blood spaces, which surround the willy. This provides a large surface area for glucose and oxygen to pass from the mother to the embryo. The developing embryo will also generate waste substances which can be removed by transferring them into the mother's blood through the placenta. Menstruation Before every ovulation, the inner lining of the uterus becomes thick and soft with lot of blood capillaries, or blood vessels, in it. If, however, a sperm is not available at the time of ovulation, then fertilization of ovum, or egg, does not take place. Since the ovum, or egg, is not fertilized, so the thick and soft uterus lining having lot of blood capillaries in it is not required. Thus, the unfertilized ovum, or egg, dies within a day and the uterus lining also breaks down. Since the thick and soft uterus lining contains a lot of blood vessels, so the breaking, or disintegration, of the uterus lining produces blood along with other tissues. This blood and other tissues come out of the vagina in the form of bleeding. The breakdown and removal of the inner, thick and soft lining of the uterus along with its blood vessels in the form of vaginal bleeding is called menstrual flow or menstruation.